talk today about evil in this world. And I know that there is, uh, I'm sure all of you are well aware of the shooting that took place in Oregon uh, this week. I'd actually like to say a quick prayer to those families and uh, people are touched by that. And we'll, we'll get into the sermon. Heavenly Father, would you be with the families in that community that were shot and killed? Would you be with the family of the, of the, of the man who was the shooter? There, Lord God, would you begin with your praise? And your love shine forth to the Christians and the followers of Christ that are out there in those communities, Lord God. Would you would you use them in a powerful way? We're so far away, Lord God, and it feels helpless sometimes. But Lord, I know that how our prayer can change lives. Lord God, I pray that for that town, that community, that school that's there, would you be with them and comfort them? Would you strengthen them, Lord God, as they are going to need to go forward from these days on? Would you have the presence in that town? Would you have the pastors of the churches that are there bind together to build that community up with resolve to follow you so that they can make it through this without losing their hope? This time, normally we would send the kids out for Children's Church. Uh, we've got a few things that we're working on right now. If you've got a few of your kids here and they need something to do, we've got some bags in the back um, that they can have some activities, some coloring books, other kinds of, of stuff back there. But starting either next week or the week after, we're going to have uh, our children begin working on their Christmas program. Uh, and so that's going to be happening during this, uh, this church time. So uh, kids up through 5th grade, 6th grade, um, you guys will be going back to the back. You'll be working on some of your Christmas music and, and getting ready for a Christmas program. So that's just some exciting stuff coming up. Parents, I know you love seeing your kids up here singing singing stuff. So uh, it's going to be good times. Um, for, our, for, for the message today, I was, I was reading, uh, you've got the, the scripture in front of you. Uh, if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 48. And in there, there's a part about if, if, you, if, if someone strikes you on the cheek, uh, turning him the other also. And it got me thinking, I, I have never personally been, been punched. Okay, so I've never, I've never actually been struck uh, other than probably my wife. Um, <laughs> and, and one time in college, <laughs> yeah, maybe we've been in college, I was out of state, and there was, uh, uh, it was finals week. And, and, and most, most college campuses have this, but during finals week, there's 23 and a half hours of, of silence or quiet during finals week in the dorm, so that at that time is dedicated to studying for finals. There's a half hour block where you get to go nuts, right? Um, and just do whatever you want, make as much noise as you want. Uh, so we have another on a guy's floor, and uh, get one, one guy had uh, a couple sets of boxing gloves. And uh, we went down into the commons area, and we started pitting people against each other. Um, now, I was using our wore glasses. I've worn contacts before, um, but I didn't have contacts at that time, so I had to, I had to fight my roommate um, in a boxing match, uh, and he had, he, had, he had studied karate for like 10 years, right? And he, he wasn't a big guy, but he would he he say karate, and I, I had to take my glasses off, so I had to be flush with it. And I, and, I, and I don't know, was it Kyle, were you the one that made fun of my glasses the other day? Yeah. It was you. <laughs> it totally was you. Yeah, he said, yeah, he said I have a really bad prescription, which I do, but you don't need to point it out to everybody, okay? Anyways, so I, so I had some big glasses, okay, just to put it out there. Coke bottle has nothing on me, okay? Um, so I had to take them off to fight this guy that has uh, training in karate, right? And then, oh my goodness, he hit me like seven times, right in the nose, like before I, you know, I, was, just, I was still standing, like, did they ring the bell yet? It was terrible. Uh, so I, that, was, that was the extent of my, I, I, I punched two guys in the face, uh, both I think I was, I, was, I was justified in doing that, I'll, I'll answer to God, I'm sure for that later, but uh, I've never been punched, like in angry, like I'm mad at you, I'm punching kind of thing, um, and so I've never had to, to deal with that, what, what does that mean to turn the other cheek, so do we take that and say, well, I didn't do anything to, to get somebody to punch me, so I don't have to worry about that one. Just cross that one off the list. Or is there something that we can apply that to our lives still? How do we turn the other cheek without actually getting into a physical altercation? That's one of those things like, 
man, I want to be so full of God, I'm going to go get in a fight with somebody that, so they can punch me, and then I can say, hey, brother, have the other side as well. We don't want to do that kind of thing. Um, we want to be able to live a life that follows the words of Jesus Christ, and that's that whole point behind this Go Team Jesus. We want to get behind the words of Jesus that he shared with his disciples and all the people that were wanting to come around and wanting to be follower of Jesus Christ, which we're, we're sitting here today, I hope you're wanting to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Let's get on Team Jesus. Let's follow the exact words that he said. And that brings us to Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 and 48. I had told the people that, uh, that were here on Wednesday night that, that this was going to be about a different section of chapter 5. It was going to be that uh, uh, 13, uh, verse 13 through 16, and then the week after, 17 through 37, uh, and we start getting into things that we shouldn't do. Like Jesus was, Jesus, he wasn't just about, hey guys, we're awesome. This is this is cool stuff to follow me. He actually gave some specific details about things we're not supposed to do. And I said, don't come, don't come on Sunday if you don't want to know what not to do. Um, but then the school shooting happened, and I've never been someone. I don't, I don't make political comments on, on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. And you typically don't talk much about it unless I'm in a one-on-one -on -one situation with somebody. And this now that this this message is going to be about it all. But it is going to be about evil. There is evil in this world. There are things that happen in this world that we need to know how to deal with. And that, I, I, I can't get this thought out of my head all week long. It's been that how, I, how many people in that town, in that school that day had said the words before, that crazy stuff's never going to happen here. That stuff's never going to happen here in Umpqua Community College. How many people here in Davis County say so that's never going to happen? Never going to happen. And the, re the, the reality is that the devil is working everywhere. There is no place exempt from the evil that is in this world. And so I, I, I couldn't get away from this message today. I think it was timely. And as we are going to take communion later, this is uh, World Communion Sunday. Okay, So there's churches all over the world are partaking in communion today. And I want us to join in with that. We are a body of Christ united together in love, the love that Jesus Christ showed by dying on the cross. And that's the kind of love that we want to take out into the world. We talked last week about sacrificial love or suicidal love even. And we have to take this idea of, of whatever Jesus was willing to do, we want to get behind that and do that as well. Let's take a look at here. Chapter 5, verses 38 through 48. Starts, you have... And these are the exact words of Jesus. Depending on which version you use. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give it to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, I know what you're thinking. No one's perfect. How can we be perfect? Therefore, the heavenly Father is perfect. I want you to hold on to that thought. We're going to come around back to that. Okay? And I for an eye. I, 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 I think I've told you before, I like, I like certain type of movies, like action movies, like, like uh, you guys have seen me wearing my, my Punisher t-shirt, you know. Um, I love that, that comic character, because he goes out and he, 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 he sets things right, right? He makes this, 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 this thing happen where someone's done something wrong, he goes and makes it right. But it's his own brand of justice, it's not God's justice by any means, but it's his own brand of justice, and he's trying to make the world right, at least his world, okay? And that's, 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 that's fun, right? That, that's like an American idea where, man, we want to, someone, someone hurt, kick my dog, I'm going to go kick their dog, and we're going to even it up, right? We're going to be even. That's what America tends to want to be. We want to be even, right? We talk about it all the time, well, this person's had more opportunities than me, it's not fair, so we've got to try to give this other person 
more opportunities. And usually what happens when we try to give someone else more opportunities, we take opportunities away from other people. And we call that even, right? We have situations in this world where, where um, things have happened, whether fairly, unfairly, um, uh, on purpose or on accident, whatever the case may be. And we even have, we have court systems that try to balance the scales of justice, right? And that's what this is talking about. And that's where we get a lot of our court systems from, is from actually some of that old Levitical law that Moses brought into play. And part of that was an eye for an eye. And a tooth for a tooth. Ever heard the saying, I think it was Gandhi that said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind? We try to even things out so much that we destroy everything that God has given us. Sometimes we've got to take a hit. Sometimes we have to turn that other cheek. We've got to give away the shirt off our back and the coat that's hanging in the pocket. How do we do that? How do we make it so that so that we're not scared to do that? A lot of times that's what gets in the way. We're afraid. We have we have this false sense of hope. And we're like, so we're going to talk about hope in just a little bit. We have this false sense of hope. And usually it's in our, it's in our retirement account. We have, we have a sense of hope, a false sense of hope, even in the, the person that we've married, that they're going to take care of us. We have a false sense of hope in the fact that uh, the, the, the church that I go to is going to take care of me. We have a false sense of hope that the government's going to take care of me. This sense of hope is so important, and we know it's so important, and we usually will put our hope in something that's not possible to give us what we need, to actually make things right. And so without hope, we cannot live the way that Jesus is talking about. We cannot live in such a way that gives away what we have as ours. That gives away that cloak, that gives away that coat off our back, that gives away, uh, you know, that makes us turn the other cheek, whatever that case may be. We have to have hope in Jesus Christ. We have to have that. And where do we get that hope? I was listening to a sermon today, uh, just this morning actually, before everyone was coming in, I was quiet, I, was, I had done some studying, and I was listening to a, a sermon on YouTube, and the guy, the guy, just out of the blue, wasn't even talking about uh, hope at all, but he, he got around to it off a tangent, um, and he said, hope is what gives us everything. And I believe that's true. That's what we're talking about today, that we can't love without hope. But where does hope come from? Hope comes from faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Do we have an ability to say, I believe in that, whatever that is, and does that provide me with hope? Okay, so we have to decide what we're going to believe in. Do I believe in, in marriage? 50% of all marriages right now are ending in divorce. More than 50% now are ending in divorce. So, so is that something that I can really place my hope in, my hope for my entire life? Everything that I am, everything that I want to accomplish, can I place my hope in that? I don't think so. And I love my marriage. My hope, though, is not that my wife is going to be perfect. If I have my hope in that, just like if you have your hope in any single person in this world, you're going to be let down at some point. And that's the way we are as human beings. Because God is it in such a way that we do not place our hope on each other. Our hope is placed firmly on Jesus Christ and Him alone. So when this over here that we want to get our hope, we have to have something that we believe in that provides that hope, we've got to believe in Jesus Christ and Him alone and the shed blood on the cross that He gave to us to cover over our sins. And when we believe in that firmly and fully, and we don't allow anything else to come in the way of believing that Jesus Christ saves us from our sins, we can actually have hope. Beautiful hope that allows us to live our lives freely. We're not burdened by the worries of this world. We're not burdened by the, by the things that bring other people down. Those things still happen to us, but we have a hope that what we're going through is going to still allow us to get to heaven because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We have to have that faith in Jesus Christ first if we're going to have any kind of hope for the future. And when we have that faith in Jesus Christ, it, it changes everything about our lives. It allows that marriage that a lot of people put their hope in, falsely put their hope in that marriage, it allows that marriage to be 
awesome and amazing. It's a three-chorded strain with Jesus Christ as the one that puts that together. Okay? They put to, when we have our some people put their faith in their job and they have the amount of money that they make. And when they put their faith in Jesus Christ first and allow that to change how they work their lives, how they, how they go about their jobs, they find a uh, purpose, they find that God has led them to the job that they are at, and they're able to do that job well and with passion because they know that God led them there. But when you try to put your faith just in a job, you're always going to look at somewhere else. The grass will always be greener on the other side. And when you jump sides, you look at, oh man, that looks like I got some rain. It's greening up. I better go back. And you spend this life going back and forth, looking for something new because your faith is not placed firmly in Jesus Christ, and so you don't have a hope for a future because your faith is misplaced. Your hope is, is misplaced. You have a false hope in the things of this world. And if and then think about when you have had your, your faith in something or someone shattered. Okay, Think about those times when, when a person has let you down, uh, and maybe before you were a Christian, uh, even when you're a Christian, people let you down all the time. Your faith's been shattered. Your hope has been shattered. What kind of life does that lead you to live? It makes things very difficult. We start to see then... Instead of the fruit of the Spirit that we read about in Galatians chapter 5, we start to read about the other list. The bitterness, the envy, the rage, the drunkenness. All those other things that are contrary to the fruit of the Spirit because we've lost our hope because our faith is not in the right place to start with. We've got to have a starting point of faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone to lead us to have hope in everything else that's going on in our lives. Bad things happen. As we read in this passage of Scripture, in verse uh, 45, he says he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. <coughs> he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. It's not an either or. It's not a, if you do this right, phew, awesome. You're going to get tons of blessings. It's not, if I do this wrong, you're going to be punished. It's not the way God works. Life happens. We live our lives and we make decisions based on where that faith is placed. But if we just decide to go based on whether good is happening at the time or bad is happening at the time, we are going to be on uh, a roller coaster jumping from fence post to fence post, over the fence, back over the other side, because good and bad happen to both good and bad people all the time. All the time. I guarantee you, in that school shooting and every other mass shooting that's been going on here in the last few years, Christians have been killed, non-Christians have been killed, and, 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 and we have to know that God is not punishing anybody. We have to know that people are making decisions based on where their level of hope is at. There are people in Davis County, there are people probably next door to you, across the street, that work in the same building as you, that have no hope, that are lost in a world where their faith is misplaced. Their hope is in something other than their faith in Jesus Christ and what He has for them. And that leads to desperate attempts to find purpose, to find a hope for a future. I don't know anything about this, this guy that, that committed this act this time. And I really, uh, it doesn't matter. All I know is he didn't know Jesus Christ. All I know is that he was lost and hurt and broken. There are people that I know that are lost and hurting and broken. There may even be some in this room right now that are lost, that are hurting, that are broken. And God has placed me and all of you in this room together, in this town together, in your neighborhood where you live. He 
He has placed you to be a light to people who are lost and hurting and broken. And He has called us to do away with an evening of the scales. He has called us to do away with making sure that I get the same as that person got. Or I'm given the same amount as that person was given. He has done away with an eye for an eye of justice. And he has taken the ultimate hit on the cross. And He calls us to follow that example. Each one of us has to figure out what that means in our own personal lives. Where has God led you? What people has He brought into your life? Have they hurt you? Have they uh, done you wrong? Whether it was yesterday or 20 years ago. Are you still waiting to get even? Are you holding the grudge? God has called us to love. There are a lot of ways to do that. It doesn't always mean BFS for life. It doesn't always mean whatever you are imagining it means. Love is living in the moment and living actions. Love is a verb. We do things. We pray. We cook meals. We ask how the kids are. We show interest. We show love. And through that, we form relationships with people. And once we start to form relationships, we build those relationships stronger and stronger until we can share that love of Jesus Christ, that light to a lost and hurting world we want. And that is what we are called to do. And we cannot do that if we don't have hope. We cannot have hope if our faith is not firmly in Jesus Christ and what He has done for us on the cross. We must start there. Let's say it together. We're going we're gonna to come and take communion. Bill, after I pray, we're going to start some, some music. We're just going to open it up that, that you can come uh, and come as a family. Uh, I would ask you to come as a family. Uh, and if anyone in your family needs to pray, pray as a family. We'll have others pray for you if you need to. Uh, we're going to take communion together as a family. One, just, as you guys come up, you can do it in your own timing. But know that there are literally thousands of people in this state, probably this country right now, that are taking communion today with you. Imagine yourselves taking this communion with all the other people that are in this world as Christ's followers today. And know that you are in unity with those people as well. That we want to spread a message of love that the world has never seen before since Jesus Christ came and died on the cross. And that's the type of love that we want to get out to our community today. I'm going to pray, and then Bill's going to start some music, and then come to the family and take the music today. Lord God, we love you, we thank you, we praise your name. Lord God, we know that you sent your son to die on the cross so that so that we could be saved and we would have someone to follow to show us how to love others, Lord God. And while you have not asked us to die on a cross, you have asked us to take up our cross daily and follow you. And when we do that, Heavenly Father, when we literally give up everything in our life and say, okay, God, I'm following you. You replace everything that we thought we gave up with things that we needed more. And you give us a purpose and a sense of a grand design that we are a part of. And that we get to participate in the saving of others. Heavenly Father, every single one of us love, we would love the idea to say that I am responsible for saving somebody else. And yet, you have given us the task of, 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 of doing that thing, but allowing your Son and your Holy Spirit to do it through us, Heavenly Father. Help us to be agents of you. Lord God, show us the people in our community that are lost and hurting that are broken. Show us our neighbors. Show us our co-workers. Show us our family members, Lord God, who are lost and hurting. And help us to know that we are part of their salvation. Because we are following you, Lord God. It begins with our decision to follow you. To have our faith be in you and you alone. 
Lord God, as we take communion today, I pray that each person in here would check their hearts, that they would ask you to check their hearts and to say, am I good with you, Lord God? Is there anything uh, in which you are not Lord of my life? And Lord, help them to give that up to you. Help me, Father. If there's anything in my life that I need to say, Lord, you are Lord, I give it to you. Before we take communion, Lord God, let that take place in people's hearts and minds as a family today, Lord God. I thank you and I praise your name. Be with us the rest of today as we come back and gather tonight, Lord. I pray that you would just be in this place in a powerful way. In your name we pray. Amen.